Good afternoon, this is Jeremy from Atlantis Hydroponics in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to go over uh, real quickly how to calibrate your pH 80 from H&M Digital. Uh, this is probably the most common meter we sell, so I figured we might as well do a video on it. Um, Alright, so the first thing we need to do is we need to take our meter and get it ready to calibrate. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our 4.0 and our 7.0 calibration solutions. I like to leave my bottles behind the glass that I'm going to put the solution in so I do not forget which solution is in which glass. So I'm going to take my 4.0. I use General Hydroponics. It seems to be pretty accurate. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this guy into my little container. I like to cut a small little X on the top of my bottle so that I prevent evaporation and spillage and that way when I tighten my cap down it seems to, to hold it really well. Uh, so that was my 4-0. Notice I put it right behind the glass with the 4-0 the in it. And then now I'm going to do my 7-0. And I'm just filling these up deep enough to submerge the probe of the pH meter since it's not waterproof. The probe part that I want to submerge is basically going to be the part from this black line down. I do not want water to go above it. Once again, this is not a P or this is not a waterproof meter. I have a handy dandy little cup of fresh water here that's just sitting. I'm going to use that to rinse off my storage solution. I'll go back over that at the end of the video. So I now I have it off. I'm just going to give it a little shake just to get as much of that off as I can without tapping it on anything to damage the components. Now I'm going to take my meter, turn it on, and I'm going to first start off by sticking it in the 4-0 solution. When I stick it in here, um, since I had a little tap water on there, I'm going to stir it just softly. Um, just and Let me pull this out so you can actually see how deep my probe is in the solution. Notice that it's only that deep. It's coming up and covering enough of the probe. Now within uh, generally about 30 seconds this thing is set. I'm going to set it back down so I can let it go and you can see my numbers and see what I'm seeing. Uh, but right here I'm paying attention to the temperature and the pH. The temperature on here once it quits moving since temperature basically affects pH. Once that stops then I know my meter is pretty much where it's going to be at and I can begin the calibration process. I'm going to give it one more little quick stir, check out my temperature, make sure it hasn't moved and it's stable. It looks like it's pretty stable. It's reading 4.1 which is really close to 4.01 but it's still not the same so I'm going to hold down the center button that says temp slash cal. I'm going to hold this button in down until the meter starts blinking at me and it's going to start saying something. There we go. So it's saying cal and it's blinking 4.0 because it auto detects the solution it's in. For any odd reason if it was in if that's the wrong one you can tap this center button again and it will and it's well it started calibrating before I could do it. I'll explain that on the 7.0. Give me just a moment. So it says end. Now that end is over I'm going to hit the center button again it's going to go back to Fahrenheit. That's how you go from you know the different temperatures, whether Fahrenheit or Celsius. Now it's calibrated at 4.0. I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the solution, being careful not to let anything drop into my 7.0 that is sitting next to it. I'm going to bring it over to my fresh water, and I'm going to just go ahead and just rinse off that, that 4.0. I'm going to give it another good little shake just to get all those little water droplets off. And now I'm going to stick it over here in my 7.0. And once again, I'm going to let it sort of stabilize after I give it like a little tiny stir. We're going to let that sort of do its thing. And as it's moving, I'm just going to give it another little stir. It helps quicken the process and sort of dilute that tap water down. All right, so now it's getting close to 7.0. It looks like my temperature is starting to stabilize a little bit. All right, it looks like it's stable. It's sitting at 7.1. I'm going to give it one more little stir. Push it forward more. Yeah. All right, so now uh, I'm going to go ahead and hold down this center button again, and I'll show you that process I was talking about. I'm going to hold it down until it blinks at me. 
and it's going to tell me it's in 7.0. If it, if it was in the wrong one, I can press this center one and it will go to 10.0, it will go to 4.0, and then 7.0. But I am in 7.0, so I'll let it stay there and I'll hit that top button for enter. And now it's calibrating and it's going to say the word end to tell me that it's done. I wait until I see the temperature before I remove it from the solution. But before I remove it, I always hit that little center button so it goes back to Fahrenheit. Now I can take my meter out. It has been calibrated on both 4.0 and 7.0. I'm going to rinse it off. I'm ready to use it. Now when I'm done using it, or if I was just calibrating it to calibrate it, when I'm done, before I put it away, I'll turn it off. I made sure I rinsed it. Inside this cap is a little sponge. I like to squeeze out the old solution, which isn't going to be a lot. And then I use a pH probe storage solution to put into the cap while I'm storing it to keep the probe moist. So this is probably my favorite one. I only put in just a couple little drops, not a lot. Once it's in there, I can now take my meter, put the cap back on. I like to walk the silicone caps on since the probe is an osmetic membrane.